What would happen if plane doors opened? Some people feel a little uneasy when it comes to flying. Oh, come on, let's be honest. A lot of people are scared out of their wits each time they fasten their seatbelts on an airplane. In fact, one out of three Americans is either afraid to fly, 18.1% of people who travel by plane, or anxious about flying, 12.6% of all passengers. And what exactly has got them rattled? 33% are nervous when the plane is flying over water. 36% are afraid to fly at night. Another 36% are scared that there will be some mechanical problems on the ground. 62% are terrified of bad weather like storms and blizzards. And 73% almost have panic attacks when they imagine mechanical problems that might appear during the flight. Yet, statistically speaking, you have no real reason to worry about flying. First of all, there's just one tiny possibility in a whopping 11 million chances that you'll be involved in an airplane accident. Secondly, 96% of all passengers who get into such accidents survive. Surprising, I know. But you can't argue with the statistics, right? Finally, experts have calculated that to be killed in a plane crash, you need to fly approximately once a day for 22,000 years. I mean, sure, that'd be some awesome frequent flyer miles, but for most of us mere mortals, it's impossible. Anyway, Despite knowing about the extremely low probability of being killed in a plane crash, people still get nervous and keep asking questions like, what if a bird crashes into my plane? What if the engines stop working? What if the plane can't gain the necessary altitude? Today, we'll try to answer some of these worrisome questions that have kept you up at night before a flight. 1. What would happen if you open the door of the plane mid-flight? Opening the door on a plane mid-flight is surely one of the worst things you could do. All the passengers sitting close to the exit would be sucked out of the cabin and flung into the sky. The temperature on board the aircraft would quickly plummet, and the plane would probably begin to break apart. To save your life, you'd have about 15 to 20 seconds to put on your oxygen mask. And even if you managed to do this, your chances of survival would still be microscopic. Oh yeah, we're supposed to be putting your fears at rest, aren't we? Well, there's nothing to worry about. The situation is purely hypothetical. There's zero chance you'd be able to open the door unless you have superhuman strength, that is. You see, at cruising altitude, the air pressure inside the cabin is about 0.7 or 0.8 atmospheres, which is equivalent to around 11 to 12 pounds of force per square inch. Again, unless you're Superman or Chuck Norris, you wouldn't be able to get the door to budge. The worst thing that would happen to you is getting arrested as soon as the plane lands. 2. What would happen if a bird hit your plane? There actually is something called an Aviation Wildlife Hazard Management Community, known in the States as Bird Strike Committee USA, that specializes in this field. According to their calculations, if a 12-pound Canadian goose hits an aircraft that's flying at a speed of 150 miles per hour, and that's pretty slow for a plane, the force of the collision will be equal to 1,000 pounds falling from a height of 10 feet. How bad the consequences of this scenario can be depends on the part of the plane that the bird crashes into. Probably everybody has heard blood-curdling stories about planes falling from the sky just from a bird being sucked into one of the engines. Well, if this really were to happen, the engine would definitely shut down. But it absolutely doesn't mean that a tragedy would ensue. Any plane is perfectly capable of flying on a single engine. And in the highly improbable situation of two birds getting sucked into both engines, the plane would simply glide gently to the ground. This, of course, would depend on the pilot's skills, but the plane would most likely land safely. Don't expect a smooth ride, though. People who have been on a plane flying with one engine says it feels like you're flying in a really bad storm. Bumpy and quite scary. If a bird hit the fuselage, canopy, or windshield, it could tear a hole in the aircraft. This would then lead to a disruption in the cabin pressure. But once again, the majority of pilots would manage to put the plane down safely. 3. What would happen if your plane got struck by lightning? 
This might come as a surprise to you, but lightning bolts strike commercial planes every single day. And when some particularly cautious people ask if it's safe to fly when flashes of lightning are illuminating the sky around the aircraft, all experts reply with a resounding, yes. The thing is that standard commercial airplanes were designed to easily take lightning strikes. That's what Dr. John Hansman, professor of aeronautics and astronautics and director of the International Center for Air Transportation at MIT, tells anyone who dreads flying in a lightning storm. According to Hansman, a lightning bolt usually strikes some sharp edge of a plane, like the nose or a wingtip, and after that, the current makes its exit through the tail. This means that electric charge runs around the outside of the plane while the interior is protected from any voltage whatsoever. So when air operators divert planes around stormy areas, they do this not because of the potential danger of lightning, but to avoid turbulence or external damage to the aircraft that can be caused by hail, for instance. 4. What would happen if your plane flew too high? As for an airplane flying too high, this can get really nasty. There have been several cases of planes crashing after trying to climb too high. For example, in October 2004, the crew of Pinnacle Airlines 3701 was flying their plane to another airport without passengers. While they should have been flying at 33,000 feet, they climbed up to 44,000 feet which led to failure in both engines. The crew didn't manage to restart them and the airplane crashed. I know, we're supposed to be easing your nerves. Just hang on. Passenger planes aren't designed to fly higher than an altitude of 7.5 miles. That limit has been set up because the air above this altitude gets too thin to hold the plane up. Of course, there is a special NASA plane aptly called Helios that can fly much higher, up to 19 miles. Up there, the air is a hundred times thinner than at sea level. No commercial flight can pull off such a feat. Anyway, you shouldn't worry about your plane climbing up to a dangerous altitude. This is strictly controlled by air traffic operators. Plus, an experienced pilot would never make such a grave mistake. 5. What would happen if your plane crashed into the ocean? If you keep up with current events or just happen to see the 2016 film called Sully, The Miracle on the Hudson, you're probably aware of one of the most successful landings on water ever pulled off. This movie is based on the real-life story that happened with U.S. Airlines Flight 1549, which struck a flock of geese after taking off from LaGuardia Airport in New York City. As a result of the collision, the plane lost all engine power entirely. Despite this critical situation, the pilot, Chesley Sully Sullenberg III, managed to land the plane, an Airbus A320, into the Hudson River. The entire crew and all 155 passengers survived the accident. Modern airplanes are designed in a way that improves their chances of landing on water successfully. All air valves that might be submerged in the event of a plane ditching on water are controlled by the pilot and can be closed by a switch on the flight deck so that they don't let any water in. Planes nowadays can also float on water for at least half an hour. This time can be even longer if all the windows and doors of the aircraft are intact. If a pilot follows protocol and manages to land the plane parallel to the waves, the chances of survival are even higher. But all this refers to situations when a plane is gliding over the water and manages to land on it. In the case of an airplane exploding in the air or losing engine power and taking a nosedive into the waves, the chances of survival are next to nothing. The time of day, the temperature of the water, how good of a swimmer you are, and a ton of other factors can also influence your chances of coming out alive. But still, no worries, right? Six. What would happen if your plane flew too fast? Wait, airplanes have a speed limit just like cars do? Yep, they sure do. But the speed limit depends on the level of the airspace the plane is flying in. A typical maximum speed is 288 miles per hour under an altitude of 10,000 feet. In some places, this altitude can be higher. For example, in Atlanta, planes can fly at this speed at as high as 12,500 feet. Above 10,000 to 12,500 feet, there are no speed limits. And pilots can fly at the maximum safe speed the aircraft's manufacturers have specified. Air traffic controllers have to monitor airplane speeds in restricted airspace. Airlines, in turn, control the speed of individual planes. 
7. What would happen if your plane ran out of fuel mid-flight? In most cases, running out of jet fuel mid-flight isn't a dire situation, but this also depends on a ton of factors. A tank on empty is usually the result of three possible situations. 1. The pilot is prepared for the fuel shortage. This happens when an airline puts as little fuel as possible in an airplane, either to have minimum weight at takeoff, or to request emergency landing and have priority over other planes at the destination airport. This way, a plane can't be requested to wait, so the company ends up saving fuel. I know, crazy, right? In this case, pilots know exactly what to do to avoid an accident. 2. The pilot isn't ready for a shortage of fuel, but can perform an emergency landing. This situation might happen if there's a fuel leakage, for instance. In this case, the airplane will glide towards the ground. If the pilot manages to reach a runway to land the plane by gliding, the landing will go smoothly. Otherwise, the plane could take a beating, but the people on board would most likely survive. 3. The worst case scenario is when the pilot isn't prepared for this fuel shortage and different factors prevent an emergency landing. If this happens, everything will depend on the pilot's speed of reaction and skills. The fact is that planes don't simply drop from the sky right after running out of fuel, they glide. And even at an altitude of 39,000 feet, a plane without fuel, and thus no engine power, can glide for over 100 miles. In fact, when a plane that has run out of fuel starts to descend, it's no different from a plane with full tanks. Believe it or not, every time your plane is about to lower altitude before landing, the engines are set to idle. This means that the airplane is gliding freely. It's actually an effective way to save fuel, and glide landing is absolutely identical to landing with the engines on. Hopefully, we've managed to clarify some of the questions you've been wondering about. Hit that like button if you've ever felt at least slightly nervous before or during a flight, or if you've learned at least one new fact from this video. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There are so many answers to different questions on the bright side of life.